here with another range video today i got something i've been promising some of our subscribers for a while i'm doing another 10 mil video now this one's a little bit different than the usual stuff i'm not showing off guns well kind of i'm using guns but i wanted to put to get uh put again a theory i've been having well not really a theory more of just testing i want to see what 10 millimeter ammo will do through different barrels now i know it's kind of been done we all know that a longer barrel is going to get more speed out of it but i wanted to see what it's going to do through a variety of barrels so i brought out three different types of ammo your standard ball nothing special sig sour range ammo some double tap because something i happen to have of and i really don't really care about firing it off and some civil defense which we know is one of the fastest 10 millimeter rounds out there so i'm going to be shooting it out of my uh glock 29 my glock 20 my glock 40 and my glock ar 10 millimeter with a uh, 10 and a half inch barrel and I want to see what kind of velocities we're going to get from these three different rounds out of these four different barrels and see exactly how the barrel length is going to affect what the speed of the round is. So here we have our uh, four different test subjects today. We have our Glock 29, our Glock 20. Now this is coming in, I think, about three and a half inches. I got to double check the spec. It's been a while since I looked. Three, three and a half inches. Our uh, standard uh, four and some change inch barrel. Our Glock 40. Now this one has a little bit longer than normal barrel. It has a uh, fully rifled suppressed, so it's got an extra about half an inch of thread on it. And then we have our AR, which has the uh, ten and a half inch barrel on it. And we're going to be shooting our elite performance ammunition. Uh, I have a lot of really cheap range ammo, but I figured this is going to be probably our most consistent powder load. So that way we can have a little bit more of a consistent reading on the chronograph. Uh, some WTAP ammunition. I bought this stuff. I, I got it for really inexpensive on sale a while ago, so I have a good amount of it, so I don't mind using it up. And yes, my civil defense, I don't like using this stuff unless I have to. But it's the fastest stuff I can find right now, so I want to use it so we can use it for comparisons. This is going to be our test today. Let's see what we can do. We're going to be starting off with our Glock 29. This is my uh, favorite EDC. So we're going to be starting off with the uh, SIG. Nothing special ball ammo. This is my first time using this Crone, so let's see if I can get to work properly. Ooh, I'm going to have to granny shoot this. Uh, 1170, 1149, 1149. Alright, let's go ahead and hop over to the double tap ammunition. Should be a little bit hotter than range ammo. Well, at least we'd hope so. So, actually, uh, quite a bit slower than uh, the six hour range ammo, but I guess it's self defense ammo, so it's about, uh, ooh, about 150 feet per second slower than the six hour range ammo. Probably why I got it so cheap. So, all right, now we are using the civil defense. This stuff is rated at a whole lot of fast. Let's see what it does out of a little barrel. That's 2,189. Uh, that one went 605, not sure why. That's an off number. 606, okay, there's something, oh, that must be 2,606, that, that can't be right. Restart this real quick. So we had 2,200, 2,164, and 
32,185. So we got roughly uh, 2,200 feet per second right around that range. So yeah, that little bullet is screaming. So we got about uh, 2,200 feet per second out of the uh, short barrel for the civil defense. Let's go ahead and the, uh, the Glock 20 here. Slightly longer barrel. This isn't a factory barrel. My factory barrel uh, was unfortunately damaged while in evidence in Omos Park somehow. So I had to put a new one on here. This is a standard, uh, what is this? I think it's a lone wolf barrel. But anyways, so it's the aftermarket. I don't know if that's going to affect uh, velocity very much. But let's go ahead and start off with our Sig Sauer ammo. I think we're sitting right around 1,200 feet per second out of the 29. So let's see if we're going to have any bit of a difference out of the slightly longer barrel. Oh, let me start a new cycle real quick. All right. We got 1211, 1215, and 1194. So, yeah, we got about 50 feet per second more. Not a large amount, but it is a little bit more. Now let's move on to the double tap. Now we are sitting below a thousand feet per second with this out of the 29. Let's see if that little extra inch of barrel makes a big difference on this guy. We got uh, 1100, 1195, okay, and 1196. 2385 for the first civil defense. 2389 and 2380. So we're sitting right about 2380 feet per second. So we're getting a little bit hotter at the civil defense with the longer barrel. So we're still climbing in that one. Let's go ahead and move on to slide this we are running a i believe it is a yep also a lone wolf alpha this one has like i said threaded barrel so it's got about an extra half an inch on it so this is even a little bit longer than your standard long slide so it's the long long slide we're going to start off as always using the sig sour ball ammo let me go ahead and start a new string on this guy doing three rounds as usual let's see if we're going to get even more speed out of this last time we picked up about 50 feet per second Let's see if we can get a little bit more. Yeah, doing my granny pose. Let's see, 13, 17. Wow, even better. 13, 32. And 1308. So we're looking at right around the low 1300 feet per second, which is a pretty big incline. I mean, we get another. Oh, God. Let's see, we're at. Uh, 11 something so yeah we picked up 100 so feet per second out of that guy tap ammunition i know it wasn't very good out of the short barrel did pretty decent in the 20. let's see what it does in the long slide let's go ahead and get ourselves a new string all right let's see if this double tap can perform out of a longer barrel 1160 1162 and 1169 that looks like uh the powder burn on that actually doesn't really work for the longer slides as well it looks like it's a little bit more compensated for that standard length barrel so and there is a round in my head go ahead and move over to the civil defense start a new string real quick i think this one Should be moving pretty quick. Let's see. Twenty six oh nine. Twenty six six six. And twenty five seventy four. Wow, we're looking at rifle range right or rifle speeds right there. I mean, roughly twenty six hundred feet per second out of a pistol. That's pretty dang good right there. And that's, I mean, it's a long slide, but damn. 
Well, let's go ahead and set up and see what it does out of the ten and a half. Most because I really don't know what the the feet per second has been out of this guy. I've just been assuming it's faster. So I finally get to figure out, hey, was it worth it to build this other than the fact that I can interchange my Glock makes? So I guess it's time to put it to the test. Well, let's start off with our standard six hour ball ammo. Now I'm gonna have to be careful because obviously height over bore and I don't want to shoot my chronograph. Come on. All right, let's go ahead and move to the double tap. Now, this started slowing down a little bit, so let's see if that powder is going to make a, uh, a big difference to the longer barrel. Let's see if it's not going to give us the numbers we want because of it burning a little bit too quickly. Let me hit the new string real quick. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, 1166, 1193, and 1207. So, of course, this is the one I've been hoping for the most. This is what I've been waiting for. I really want to see, will this round break 3,000 feet per second out of a long barrel? I don't know, but we're going to find out. Uh, 2721, 2766, and 2849. Oh, not 3,000 feet per second. I didn't really know if it's going to get there. In the back of my head, I was hoping, but still roughly 2,800 feet per second out of a 65 grain, 10 millimeter fragmenting jacketed, I'm sorry, not jacketed, solid projectile. That is ridiculous. I mean, you got to think that that is AR-15, M16, M4 speeds. That, that is a round that will hit you and then break apart into a whole bunch of little chunks and dump all its kinetic energy. And if not, it'll tear through you and then do it to the guy behind you. That civil defense round out of a 10 and a half inch barrel is absolutely devastating. That is a bad mofo round right there. So anyways, let me go ahead, stop, crunch these numbers real quick, and see what kind of spread we have. So got all the numbers crunched. Starting with the Glock 29 for the, uh, actually, let's go ahead and just cross all the numbers between the ammo, what we got. Starting with the Glock 29, the ball ammo, we had 1,156 feet per second on average. Then moving up to the Glock 20, we had 1,205 feet per second with 49 feet per second increase. Going to the 40, moved up to 1,319 feet per second for 113 feet per second increase from the 20. We moved up to the AR, we went up to 1,322 feet per second, which was a 33 feet per second increase over the 40. Not significant, but we see the increase in climbing. Now we went to the double tap ammunition, which is kind of a run-of-the-mill, self-defense, nothing special ammo. We started off at 1,002 feet per second on average with the Glock 29. When we moved up to the Glock 20, we had a 1,163 feet per second average of 160 feet per second increase over the short barrel, obviously showing that the powder for that was designed for a standard length barrel versus a short. So that's not really the greatest bullet for your subcompact weapon more of a full size barrel now the funny part about that is the average was actually exactly the same at 1163 per second for the glock 40 as well so i didn't see any increase whatsoever between the standard frame or standard barrel and the longer barrel out of the glock 40 but it was a 160 feet per second increase from the subcompact to the full size and the long frame and then when I went up to the AR, I got 1,188 feet per second, 
or a 24 feet per second increase between the Glock 20 and the Glock 40. Moving up to the Civil Defense, that's where we start getting higher speeds, but when you look at percentage increase, it's not dramatic compared to the other ones. We started off at 2,179 feet per second out of the Glock uh, 29, which out of a subcompact, that's pretty fast. We moved up to the 20, we went to 2,387 feet per second or 207 feet per second increase. We went up to the 40, we moved to 2,616 feet per second or 228 feet per second increase over the Glock 20. And when we moved to the AR, we went to 2,778 feet per second or a 161 feet per second increase over to the long slot. So obviously that had the, the largest increase in feet per second when you break it down into the average numbers. I mean, still that's not bad. Let's say we divide those numbers in half so they're closer to what the average round would be. That would still be roughly 100 feet per second, 110 feet per second and uh, 80 feet per second increase. So it still has the best increase, you know, numerically overall versus the other rounds I used. Now there's a lot of ammunition out there. There's a lot of hot loads, heavy loads, things of that nature. But let's say we took the 65 grain, we doubled the uh, the weight on it. So let's say we make it, uh, that'd be what, 130 grains roughly. And then we cut the speed in half. That's still a pretty good moving round. So. If you like my video, as usual, feel free to hit the like button. Sorry about the wind noise. I ordered a new microphone, but it was on back order, so I had to order another one. So, unfortunately, I got to do what I got to deal with. So, as usual, if you got any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section. Until next time, not so slim Jim.